Hey guys, what's going on? It is Wednesday, April 29th. Mr. Mother's Ball here. Um, I was looking at the calendar and there are no 8th grade birthdays today. We're just going to have to wait and uh, see who's coming up next. But I don't have anybody on the calendar for today. Um, Festus Middle School morning announcements are going to be brought to you by Mrs. Beffa and her kids. They did a great job last time. I'm excited to see what they do this time. Um, yesterday, we started our um, atmosphere and water cycle section review. Um, today, we're going to finish that up. So we uh, completed, let's look at the computer screen. We completed numbers one, two, and three yesterday. We talked about the atmospheric layers of the earth uh, closest to the surface and then the farthest away. And then we talked about temperature differences and the mixture of the gases that make up those uh, different layers. And then we talked about as we... Uh, as we increase altitude, why does the air pressure decrease? Because it's like a pyramid and those, uh, those air masses are, are farther apart or the air particles are far, farther apart. So today we're going to finish up this section over the atmosphere and the water cycle. And you can see on number four that we've got some words there. Radiation, conduction, and convection that we've talked about already. When we talked about heat uh, transfer earlier in our little eighth grade or seventh grade review. Uh, what role does each of the following heat transfers play in heating the trophosphere? So the atmospheric layers of the Earth, we're talking about the troph trophosphere. Radiation, we know that comes from the sun, right? So radiant energy comes from the sun, and it says 50% is absorbed by the Earth's crust. The rest of it is, uh, you know, reflected off of the Earth's atmosphere and never reaches the ground. Um, conduction, it says Earth's uh, crust is heats the air particles directly above through direct contact. So conduction is when two things touch and uh, that energy is transferred from one thing to another. So the Earth's crust actually heats up the air particles. And then convection, we talked about convection currents a few different times this year, talking about it down in the mantle, hot rock rises, cool rock sinks. Well, same thing here with air masses, warm air rises, cool air sinks uh, causing circulation. So think about this. If you uh, if you have a house and it's a two-story house, all the hot air rises. So when you go to bed at night, it's going to be warmer upstairs than it is downstairs. Okay, so cool air is always going to sink and that hot air is going to rise. Number five, we've got some terms, uh, parts of the water cycle. We talked about every single one of these um, earlier this year. Well, the first part, I guess. Uh, when we were talking about the staircase, right? So uh, freezing, melting, evaporation, condensation, sublimation, the phase changes. Well, this has to do with the water cycle, but they are all included. You guys should know that condensation is when a gas is turned into a liquid. Evaporation is the opposite direction, so a liquid changing to a gas. Precipitation that comes from the clouds, right? So they produce uh, condensation of atmospheric water vapor that falls. So we can talk about rain or snow, sleet, hail, any of that stuff. Transpiration, that has to do with the plants, right? So the process of water movement through a plant and its evaporation from the leaves or the stems or the flowers from that plant. And then surface runoff, um, got a lot of surface runoff going on this morning because that storm that came through last night. But the water flows and it's going to uh, saturate that soil so that soil can only hold a certain amount of water and then the excess water is going to flow over the land. It's going to go into our lakes and streams and then ultimately down over there to the Mississippi River. So surface runoff, condensation, evaporation, precipitation, and transpiration. Number six, what powers the water cycle? Hmm. Do you remember? Mrs. Walker? Uh, Mrs. Bronze, Mrs. Kreitz, do you remember? That is the sun, right? The sun drives the water cycle, all right? Well, guys, that is it. We are moving on to weather and climate, but we are done with the atmosphere and the water cycle review. Uh, we hope you have a great day today. The sun's going to come out and dry up all this water. The surface runoff is going to make it into the creeks, just like we talked about in the water cycle. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Email me and let me know if you have finished any late assignments so I can get those grades updated in SIS. Bye-bye.